So about a, probably a month or so ago, I can't even remember. I just know that this song, <laughs> Hava, Nakila, Hava, was, you know, it's like a, a kind of a Jewish uh, wedding song or something. I'm like, what the heck is that? Why is, I, I know what it is uh, as far as the song, I've heard it, but I didn't know what the, what the significance was. So I went and looked it up and I forgot what the meaning was. So last night I couldn't sleep and, uh, I'm like, Lord, I prayed and I'm at peace, but I can't go to sleep. And I never turn the TV on. Usually I'll get up, maybe walk or do a lap around downstairs, upstairs, whatever. And then I go back to sleep and try to reset. But I usually do not turn the TV on. It's extremely rare that I would turn the TV on. But I did. And on public television was Hava Nagila. That's what I see on the screen. And I'm like, uh, I got to watch that. So I watch it. And it talks about the importance of this song. You tell me, what is happening to you? Is it a uh, dance? Like the polka? It's some sort of celebration song. La 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 la. They sang and danced at my bar mitzvah, but other than that, I have I'm clueless. It could be some kind of food, Nagila. That much I know. It's Jewish. It's relentless, it's resilient. But then again, so are cockroaches. Christmas, non-Christian friend. That song is immediately a connection back to tradition and community. One that just takes me back to a sense of, well, that's who I should be, or that's who I'm supposed to be. It is a melody that evokes new life and hope and joy. And that's a wonderful symbol for the Jewish people to have and for the rest of the world to think of as being a Jewish symbol. When I went anywhere in the world, there were two songs that stood out. One was Deo and Avinagila. It was a song that was, would run through my head. People would say, do you have any Jewish blood in here? I said, yes, I am 10% Jewish on my manager's side. Whenever it would start, everyone would just get happy. It's uh, time to rejoice, or I think that's what it says. I'll put this lyrics up on the screen, but it has to do with rejoicing, rejoice, rejoice. And the lyrics talk about the wheat being in the barn and the harvest. And I was like, I can't believe this. And it's mainly used as a wedding song, but it's one of the most joyous songs. It's been recorded by Elvis Presley. Harry Belafonte was talking about it. Um, um, I can't think of the other woman who they say was the greatest one to ever perform it that sold the most records. It was, um... This Your children's voices sing with hearts 
It's been recorded in almost every country, and it's really amazing. Harry Belafonte said that if I wanted to get performances, I had to learn that song because it was always performed at a wedding, and the place would always erupt in joy. And so there's something there, and today, here I am reading the lyrics to this song. Rejoice, rejoice. It's the wheat's in the barn, the time of the harvest. <laughs> and then after that, I turn on my car stereo. And there's Rejoice, O Daughter of Zion from Handel's Messiah. Rejoice, rejoice greatly. Uh, and it's talking about the Lord's return. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Rejoice greatly, 
Oh! <laughs>